Aquarimax here. Today, I'm going to show you a new little froglet. Wasn't exactly the plan for the video today. I've been working on one, tried to get it done, didn't quite have time. That's okay, because you get to see this tiny little froglet. I'm going to be trying to feed him. You can see how tiny he is. Look at that, right next to my finger. Oh, Mr. Snake, you are indeed the first, at least the first that I've seen on the chat. So, welcome. And Spug says, what is up, my dude? Well, this little frog is up, and thanks for joining us. Check him out. I don't know if you can really get an idea of how tiny he is, but there you go. I don't want to touch him. I have really sensitive skin, of course. But he's doing well, and I'm actually going to feed him. Uh, live in just a couple of minutes. I want to wait till a few more people show up in the chat and then we'll feed him some springtails and see if he's going to eat. Hey, Wolf Girl Plays. Yes, I remember you. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've done a live stream. Asylum JK. Hey, welcome. Hope you can all see this. The light, I'm not sure. I'm improvising with the light here, but he is so small indeed, Mr. Snake. Um, I'm pretty excited. We've got. Uh, Two more tadpoles that are developing. Oh, we've got Luca and Crystal Casares and Salvo Smith. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Oh, Wolf Girl Plays got a goldfish. Excellent. Which ones did you get? What kind? Okay, I'm going to try the, the feeding now. Here we go. And everyone, if you like this little frog, Click the like button so YouTube will show us some love and let other people watch this too. So here we go. Springtail time. Got a whole bunch of them ready. Let's see what he does. Never actually, oh, that was the first time I've seen him go for a springtail. That was cool. I think that's what I saw. Did you all see what I saw? Hopefully he'll eat a little bit more for us. A buggy-eyed one and a normal one. Cool. I don't know what it is, but I love the buggy-eyed ones. Even though I don't usually like goldfish that have been modified a lot, I, I go for the buggy-eyed one, the telescope eyes, especially the moors. Although some of the other ones, like the pandas and different, you know, the panda telescopes and things like that, I like those too. Cool. I think the light is just, just a little dim. Maybe if I move it over a touch, is that any better? Um, Mr. Snake says, nope, I don't want to remove the chat. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to get some azureus for a 40-gallon breeder. I was going to make it into a vivarium, but my grandma said, no more tanks. Oh, no. Well, hopefully sometime in the future you can do that. Oh, and Wolf Girl Place says one of the first ones died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, Gwen, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Come on over and see if you can aim the light. You know how to adjust that so it'll aim more towards the frog here. Um, you use the little spinny thing on the side there, and you loosen it, and then it'll let you move the light. And my daughter's helping me out a little bit. Yeah, you just want to get it aimed towards this a little bit. You can even make the light lower with the things on the sides if you want. The Pocosaurus, howdy. You're in. And Crystal Casade says... I heard springtails are a good cleanup through that one on the side there. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. I think it is anyway. It looks like it's going to work a little better. Yeah, that's, that looks like better to me. Um, Crystal Casari says, I heard springtails are good cleanup crew. Indeed they are. They're excellent. And that I use them a lot for cleanup crews. And they also make excellent foods for baby frogs. But they're good cleanup crews for geckos and frogs and lizards and snakes and all sorts of different things. Of course, geckos are kind of lizard too. Thank you. I think he's cute, too. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. I won't know for a while, but definitely cute. Selbo so Smith says, My black moor is getting bigger and bigger. You reckon she can be a danger for smaller fish? She seems pretty docile. Well, um, my rule is if a fish can swallow another fish, if it can fit it in its mouth, it's very likely that that's going to happen. But, you know, a moor is a little bit different than most other fish. They're not terribly fast swimmers. So I think you have a little bit of a better chance of uh, fewer problems, but you can't rule it out. You know, there's no way to know for sure what's going to happen with that. But 
you're probably better off with a moor than you would be with, say, a shoebunkin or a comet goldfish with smaller fish. You can say that. I think that's probably safe to say, but there's no way to know for sure. Pokosaurus says, what can you tell me about cichlids? Uh, my cichlids used to have tank mates. They're dead. Well, depending on the ty type of cichlid, that's not uncommon. I mean, there are really, really aggressive cichlids out there. On the other hand, there are cichlids that can do well with quite a different variety of tank mates, too. So it just depends on the species of cichlid that you have and you're working with. Um, I would say, uh, you know, some of the cichlids, like angelfish, make decent community fish when they're not, you know, in having a, trying to maintain a breeding territory. And um, some fish can make excellent community uh, some cichlids can make excellent community members with other cichlids of similar temperaments, like uh, a lot of the Malawi cichlids are that way, or the Tanganyikan cichlids are that way. And then there are things like the dwarf cichlids or the, the rams, things like that that can do well with certain fish. Uh, but then there are some that are just, they'll attack just about everything. I mean, Jack Dempsey's are pretty famous for aggression, and they need to be kept either alone or with other similarly aggressive fish, things like that. And Wolf Girl Play says, sorry, I have not come into the wild, just busy with school and my videos. Totally understandable. Not a problem, but I'm glad that you're back. And Mr. Snake says, the frog is just like, I don't care about the food, but look at this view. Yeah, it seems to be it. It looks like he took one snap near the beginning, but a lot of the springtails have retreated down into leaf litter, and he's not doing a whole lot. So maybe what I'm going to do, I'll just change the uh, view here and uh, do some... Some Q and A. Just you can look at my face if you don't mind, or you can look away from my face, and you can uh, participate in the Q and A anyway. So we're gonna put this I little like guy away. Face. I don't know if you heard that, but my wife said I like your face, so I'm glad she does. Let's see. I lost my lid. Oh no, Gwen, can you help me again recover my lid? Where is it? It fell down there between Tiki's tank and the dart frog tank. You see it right on the heater vent. I wonder how it got there. Oh, it just kind of rolled through the. Thing there. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put the frog away. We're going to do some Q&A. So that, just bear with me for a second as we get that going. Um, it's going to be awkward for just a second. Let's see. I'm going to flip that so you're looking at me, but you're going to see my thumb. Sorry, that was unavoidable. Uh, here we go. I know this is awkward, but we'll get it going. Change the lighting around a little bit. Um, so that you can see me, at least you can hear me right now, right? Um, let's see, maybe that'll work. Take a look at that. Oh, something like that. That tank back there is way overexposed for you, but that's okay. Um, is that, let me know if that's awful, and then I'll fix it, if it is. But if this is okay, um, let me know. Um, so, Crystal Casario says, I'm so into your frogs. Well, thank you. It's been really fun making the videos about them with this new vivarium and all the breeding and everything, so I'm glad you're enjoying it. Asylum JK says, ET on the new merch. Well, I have actually done some new designs, uh, and they're up on the Teespring page, which you can see. You just look at the bottom of any of my videos now. Finally got that working. Um, at the bottom of any of my videos, at least on most devices and computers, you'll see the Aquarimax Teespring uh, link, and it'll show a couple of examples, shirts or whatever. You click on those, some of that will show up. However, if you mean um, new as of like within the last couple of days or weeks, I haven't done a whole lot of new designs in that time, but I would love to, and I'm totally taking requests at this point. If you have requests for particular um, animals that I have, then I will, I will take requests and I will make um, merchandise based on those. I'm also toying with the idea of getting a, a designer. I, I know a graphic designer uh, who would I, I'd have to pay him, of course, but he would make me some based on, you know, my request. So um, I'm interested in doing that as well. I'm also interested, if any of you are, you know, you're professional or semi-professional graphic designers and you'd be interested in doing that, I'd, I'd be interested in talking to you about it. I want to get some new merch out there with some cool designs. So very interested in all of that. Everything Created says, hi, Russ, do you have any advice about how I can get my channel out there? Well, you're doing one of those things right now, and that's getting on another channel. Uh, and participating in their live streams. Um, then people, you know, get curious and, and start clicking. Um, releasing a video at the same time every week is another one. Really big. 
you know, I've been releasing my videos for about three years at 4.30 on Friday afternoons. And then if I do uh, live streams in addition to that, I usually do those on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. But the Friday 4.30, at least my time, is extremely consistent. That consistency is huge. So there are two tips for you. Um, participate in other people's channels and um, keep your release schedule consistent. It's much better, honestly, in my opinion, to make one video a week than to make two videos at random times because people will know what to expect. Um, and they will look forward to your videos when they're about to come out. Salvo Smith says, is this one of the offspring of your adult ones? It is indeed the first offspring to uh, reach this uh, frog form. I think there was probably one tadpole that the adults never dropped in the, in the pool, never made it um, into the pool. But uh, it's the first one that I was able to collect. And, it, and so, yeah. Pocasora says, I don't know her species, but she's big, white, and eats anything alive, including snails. Big and white. Hmm. Could be a convict cichlid, but and I'm not going to limit it to convict cichlid, but there are white convicts out there, and they can get pretty big, actually. Mr. Snake says, how are the morning geckos doing? They're doing great. I've got five adults, at least four juveniles, and something like half a dozen eggs right now. Doing great. They're always growing. So... Okay. Let's see. Some people are saying it's good, not awful. It's okay. Um, oh, that's the lighting. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we'll go with it then. If it's that, if it's good enough, we'll go with it. I can turn off the other lighter. That's going to help. Let me check. Just a second. Um, is that any better? If it is, we'll go with it. If not. Let me know, but I think I'm going to go with it anyway so I can just keep looking at the screen here and responding to your comments. Okay, Kent Ross says, I have a couple of four-month-old morning geckos that are only interested in eating fruit flies. How do you get yours to eat a fruit mix? Good question. Um, I would say they tend to do it if you skip food for a couple of days. You're not going to hurt them if they're generally well-fed. Skipping food for a couple of days, making your fruit mix watery. And if you have to... Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't withhold water from them necessarily, but just, um, so make sure there's still a water dish in there, but don't feed any flies, put the, the fruit mix in there. I'm assuming you're meaning something like CGD, um, Crested Gecko Diet, Ripashi or Pangea or something like that. Um, put that in there and leave it in there. Keep it watery. They like it really kind of a, a slurry rather than a paste. So, um, do that and keep it going. Um. Uh, just try it. I would leave it in there for several days, see if they eat any of it. They probably are eating it, even if you don't see them eating it, if it's been a couple of days and they haven't had flies. So um, mine love it, and I bet you can just get, it, get them to eat it if you give them just that and no flies for a few days. And then you can put a few flies in to make sure they're not starving, and then start over again. You know, you don't want to leave the CG there any longer than about 48 hours, ideally, at a time, and then you can just start over again. Salvo Smith says, you can hear your budgie. Yeah, he's about hmm, two meters away from me right now, sitting on my daughter's knee as she's reading. So, yep, he's, he's talkative. Crystal Casade says, do you have a red-tailed catfish? I see it on your channel sometimes. Oh, I do have that big, um, the big shovel-nosed catfish on the channel, but he's not mine. He's actually from a public aquarium near where I live. And he's in my, he's the one that says, subscribe. And uh, yeah, not mine. That would be cool, but I'd have to have a huge tank, and I don't have a tank that big. So, uh, but I'm glad you you recognize him, though. I think he's kind of a fun part of the channel, even though he's not personally mine. Uh, Mr. Snake says, Kent, I'm not sure what age is considered adult for morning geckos, but I think as it is for most animals, they need a lot more protein when they're young, and they do seem to to go after the flies a lot when they're young. When they're a few days old, especially, they don't really like the CGD very much and they'll do the flies, but after they're, you know, maybe a few weeks old, they'll start getting into the CGD. But that, I would agree. Will Ratsoy, hey, I remember doing that video for you. Yeah, he says, hey Russ, it's Will. You did a baby morning gecko care video for me. I set up my custom 65 gallon and have two reticulated glass frogs, two imitator verdadero dart frogs, and four morning geckos. Thanks for your help. Awesome, that sounds like a really cool setup. I wish I could do a 65 gallon setup. That is awesome. And everything created says you were able to raise the eggs artificially, correct? I thought the success rate was higher that way. Uh, for the dart frogs, I have um, 
in in a sense I have, but I not I didn't do anything with the eggs. I left the eggs where they were, and I know people do different things with that, but I honestly was not interested in raising a huge number of them. This was more for the experience at this point than it was for anything else. The experience of raising the tadpole, so a small number was fine with me. So um, I didn't mess with any of that. I just removed the tadpoles from the main tank, which does increase the um, success rate as well. I noticed that if I didn't pull the tadpoles right away, uh, they sometimes disappeared and I'm assuming they were eaten. I just, I think I lost one tadpole only that way, but um, one morning right before I went to work, I looked in and saw a tadpole and I said, okay, mental note, as soon as I get back from work, I'm pulling that tadpole because I had to leave, I mean, right then. And I came right home, looked straight in the tank and the tadpole was gone. So after that, I realized I couldn't do that anymore and my kids pulled the next one before, you know, as soon as they saw it. So uh, it survived. And Wolf Girl Play says, okay, Russ, can you please give me some advice about making sure my fish are happy? Yeah, yeah, I can. I think, uh, tell me a little bit about your setup. That will help. But uh, one thing, make sure you're doing those partial water changes. Uh, make sure that your goldfish are getting some vegetable matter. Um, those are two big things. Um, so, but let me know a little bit about your setup and I'll see what I can do in helping you. Yeah, the Pocosaurus. Hmm, she might be a convict. Very possible. I actually love convict cichlids. It's kind of funny. I know a lot of people will say, oh, those are, you like convict cichlids. Those are like a dime a dozen and they breed in wet cotton. Well, they certainly breed very easily, but I kept convict cichlids years ago. We're talking like 15, 18 years ago, something between there. And I love them. They're just so fun. I don't know what it is about them exactly. I like their patterns. I like their personality. They're pretty cool. Um... So the Pocosaurus says, one time I put my finger in her tank to feel the temperature. She went for my finger. <laughs> Sounds like it could be a uh, convict cichlid. I mean, it could be another two, but... Yeah, if you Google uh, white convict cichlid or pink convict cichlid and it looks like that, let me know. Salvo Smith says, if you could choose to get some tortoise, what species would you choose? Well, I love tortoises. I would probably go for a small species. Um, unfortunately, here is not an ideal... Uh, climate for them but you go down south a few hours of here and there are people who can keep them outdoors all year round I would probably do Russian tortoises I'm thinking just because I like the fact that they're small um, I do I love sulcatas but they're so big uh, when I was in the zoo in Hawaii I one of my tasks was to feed some of the larger tortoises a couple of different species of tortoises but there was a large I, th I believe it was a sulcata tortoise named Gladys he, it was a male named Gladys. He was really big, and he was blind. He had been, he was super old, and, but he was just fine. I'd get, I'd, one of my jobs was to go around the zoo and collect the proper kinds of uh, foliage that grew around the zoo. We were actually supposed to do that, clip certain plants, and uh, like we had spineless Opuntia cactus pads we'd cut up and give him and different things like that, and it was fun. I really, really got a kick out of doing that. Um... Lagiacris, the Terminator is in. Welcome. And the Pocosaurus, wet cotton. It was it's kind of a joke. People joke that um, that convict cichlids can breed in wet cotton because they're so easy to breed that you could just take a couple of fish and throw them in a container of wet cotton and that would be suitable enough for them to breed. Of course, it's not true. But you can take, if you have a male and a female uh, convict cichlid in halfway decent condi conditions, it's almost certain that they're going to breed. So I think that's just where that comes from. Wolf Girl Play said, my setup is a triangle tank with a clear LED light with a submarine and some fake plants and a filter. Cool. How uh, big is it? How many gallons you got? And Quadro says, hi, welcome Quadro. Everything created says, uh, in my leopard gecko bioactive and the urates of the poop don't break down, do you have this problem? My cleanup crew is Armadillidium vulgare, Porcelionides prunosis, and Springtail. Sounds like a great cleanup crew. You know, urates typically don't break down as well as the rest of the waste. So the actual fecal material that's produced is usually broken down very, very well by the bioactive crew. And the urates, I'm not as well, but I'll tell you what I have found. My, the urates in our bioactive vivarium get broken down fairly well. And I'm not sure why that is, but I think it may have something to do with the fact that mealworms are part of the cleanup crew. So maybe try that. Try throwing in... Uh, 15, 20 mealworms, and you might need to wait a couple of months. 
and just spot clean the urates. Just pull them out, you know, put a glove on or grab a tissue or something like that. Spot clean those urates, pull them out, and then um, after your mealworms have been breeding in there for a while, see what happens. Uh, see if you don't have to clean it up quite as often because I rarely have to, and I think it may be because of the mealworms, but I'm not certain. Mr. Snake says, speaking of Russian tortoises, my teacher has one in a 20-gallon tank with no UVB, no supplements, and an overgrown beak. I feel so sad for it. Yeah, that is not, not good. That is a sad thing. Have you uh, gently approached the topic with your uh, teacher? Because not only is the size of the tank inappropriate, the no UVB is a huge problem. That's, all of that's a problem, of course, as you well know. So um, if you can figure out a way to... Um, help that tortoise out, that would be great. The Pokosaurus says, My cichlid does move stuff in her tank a lot. One time I saw her move a fake plant and it looked like Pac-Man moving a couch. <laughs> that's a perfect way to explain it somehow. I love that, actually. Uh, and yeah, that's one thing about mini cichlids is they will rearrange the tank so you... It's not something the kind of fish... Well, there are exceptions. You know, some of the dwarf cichlids and um, angelfish and things like that you can do fantastic aquascapes with. But... Things like convex cichlids, you really, it's kind of pointless to aquascape unless you're just using really big, heavy things. Uh, and live plants, probably not. Maybe you get away with something like Anubias, but yeah. So Wolf Girl Play said, it is a 2.5 gallon tank. Okay. Uh, depending on the size of your goldfish, my thing I want to say, I want to uh, make sure that um, you understand what I mean, but... Um, 2.5 gallon tank is not going to last them very long. Uh, it, it also depends on their size. Um, if they are, you know, maybe an inch long, they'll be okay for a little while. But as soon as you can, upgrade. And I would say don't bother upgrading to a 10 gallon. It's too small. I would say the minimum tank you want to upgrade to would be a 20. A uh, 20 long, preferably, for more footprint. And then you're going to have to get a bigger one later. And I hate to say it, but that's just the way it is with goldfish that they're going to grow, uh, and if they don't grow, they're not going to be healthy, and if they grow, they're going to outgrow that tank. So, um, yeah, that's what I would suggest. So, Asylum JK says, have you ever had issues with scale on your vivarium plants? If so, how did you prevent it? I noticed some forming on one of my bromeliads. I think I caught it early bef enough before it became a problem. Um, there are a couple things you can do with scale, and I have had... Never in my uh, tropical vivariums, but in our leopard gecko vivarium, I introduced some um, jade plant in there. And I'm not sure if um, that is because... I'm not sure where it came from. I bought the plant at a nursery, and I soaked it, I believe. I can't even remember now. I, I'm not as careful processing my plants when I put them in arid vivariums as I am when I put them in to tropical vivariums. I'm like religious about putting, about processing the plants that I put in my tropical vivariums, but not so much with the uh, arid vivariums, and I probably should be, and I think I probably will be now, because I did see some scale insects on one of those recently. What I did, there weren't a ton of them, I didn't see a lot of them, so I took a toothpick and just kind of teased them off of the plant, and I, they haven't been coming back. The last couple of times I've checked, I haven't seen them um, at all, so uh, that... Um, took care of it for me. I've heard you can use like a, a cotton swab dipped in alcohol, like rubbing alcohol and touch the, the scales with it. That's supposed to help too, but I haven't tried that, at least not recently. So, But it did take care of it. The Pokesaurus says, I looked up convict cichlid and matches her just right. Cool. Yeah, that, that is awesome. I, I'm kind of slightly jealous because I really like convict cichlids. You know, I really like the, uh, the calico one. They're amazing. And I think they're one of the, even though they, sometimes when you get them, they're kind of inbred and stuff. If you can find a nice one, they're kind of a good way to get a lot of cichlid personality and not a gigantic package. You still need a fairly big tank for them, but, you know, you don't have to get a 100-gallon tank for one convict cichlid. So, cool. And Wolf Girl Play said, I'll ask my parents if I can get a bigger tank soon. Awesome. That's the best way to go. And Mr. Snake says, I've asked her to let me build a tortoise table. Well, that would be cool. That would be a great way to start addressing the issues that that tortoise needs help with. So, excellent. Spug says, are you familiar with seed shrimp at all? AKA ostracods. I know they're a type of Daphne, but I'm not really sure what the difference is, if any. Well, they are, um, they're not exactly Daphne, but they're related to Daphnia. 
um, Daphnia are cladocerans rather than ostracods, but they're related. And ostracods tend to be smaller, although there are some larger species. There are some species that I've seen that are larger than any Daphnia species I've seen, but in general they tend to be smaller. And they tend to show up in similar situations. A lot of aquariums have a few seed shrimp in them. If you get a tank where you don't have anything that eats the seed shrimp at all, they tend to start getting in larger numbers. So it might be like a shrimp tank or something like that. You might see more of them. They're not harmful. Small fish will eat them. And they tend to be detritivores. So they'll eat, you know, uneaten food at the bottom. They'll eat whatever kind of mulm or detritus um, forms at the bottom of the tank. And rather than spend most of their time in the water column, suspended in the water column like Daphne do, they will usually crawl around and buzz around on the bottom. And those are some of the differences there. And they're called seed shrimp because the shape of their carapace looks kind of like a seed in some species. Some are too small to really notice it. But I've had species that are probably, I don't know, uh, almost a centimeter long. Some of the vernal pool species get pretty big. But you don't really see those in aquaria. Wolf Girl Play says, I'll keep watching for a little while to see if I have any more questions. Excellent. Mr. Snake says, the Pocosaurus, I agree 100%. And also, have you seen the horrors of Pet Smart and Petco? Well, sometimes that can be an issue. Um, Mr. Snake says, how do I reply to the comments? I feel slow. Let me see if I can speed up the comments a little bit. Let me know if that helps. I just tried switching it to live chat from slow chat. Everything Created says, do you ever have problems with people trolling your live streams? I had it happen once and it was very awkward. Yeah, once in a while. Um, I have had that issue. Jack Bordeaux says, I have a morning gecko and a blue dart frog. Can't spell the name. What size tank would you recommend? So there is time for the geckos to breed and if I want to get two other darts. Okay, if you're going to get two other darts, I'd suggest getting one like the one back here, uh, 29 gallon or so, or bigger if you can. But uh, probably at least a 29 gallon because the rule of thumb is about uh, 10 gallons per frog. And then the dart frogs and the morning geckos are not really going to use the same space all that much. And that tank would be big enough for, I would say, at least a dozen morning geckos. Now, honestly, I don't necessarily recommend keeping both morning geckos and dart frogs together. You can do it. it, it it'll, it'll work. But uh, I think the humidity levels required by most dart frogs is a little higher than the ideal for morning geckos. Not that they won't breed and they won't be fine. Morning geckos are pretty hardy. But uh, they seem to do better when the humidity is just a little lower and they get a little more ventilation. It's probably more the ventilation than the humidity. They just prefer the air movement and so on. But it can work for you. Spug says, I plan to add some seed shrimps to my tank to act as a cleanup crew, almost like springtails. And yeah, they will do some of that. I don't know if they're quite as effective at springtails, but they'll definitely be part of that ecosystem and, and uh, take care of some of that food. That uneaten uh, detritus and things like that. I mean, you don't want uneaten food in the tank anyway, but you know, whatever small scraps the fish miss, the ostracods will help pick that up, and then the fish will have snacks, as long as you have fish that are appropriately sized. So, Wolf Girl Play says, okay, here's a question for you. My fish have lived for about five months now. Do you know how much longer they will live? Well, if you're able to get a bigger tank for them, and you're able to give them all the care they need, a goldfish can live for many, many years, several decades, uh, at least... 40, more than 40 years is the record. And I would say that as long as you, you know, you're able to get a nice large tank for them, maintain good water quality and so on, there's no reason to say why your fancy ones tend to live a little less long than the, the more common varieties, it seems like. But um, probably, you know, you might have half a dozen years or more with the, the fancy one, and you could have 20 or so with uh, other goldfish. I have had, the longest goldfish I've ever had was 16 years and it probably lived longer than that but I was moving to Hawaii uh, at a certain point I had had the fish for 16 years and had to move to Hawaii for a job and so I couldn't bring the goldfish with me and so I had to find another home for it so it may be alive for all I know I mean that would be a long time but not unheard of so yeah they can live a long time if they're they have everything they need Pocosaurus says do you have any experience do you have with birds I've actually had quite a few birds um, Mostly things like uh, budgies, uh, like the budgie we have now. I've trained and uh, raised budgies, uh, you know, for a long time. Started keeping them when I was a child. I also um, kept and bred zebra finches. 
and I raised several orphaned wild birds when I was young, notably a quail and a starling. The starling would fly back, uh, lived outside and would fly back and land on me and beg for food, things like that. So um, I have kept other birds too. We kept a cockatiel for a while that we rescued. We had to find it a new home because it decided it hated my wife and that was not a sustainable situation, obviously. So we had to find it a new home and we did. We found it a home with another cockatiel that it fell in love with and they were buddies. So that worked out. Um, trying to think what else. I've worked with birds in a zoo a bit. I worked with a, a cockatoo named Eliza that I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, I have had a fair bit of experience with birds. Also have been raising chickens for the past, what is it, two and a half or three years? Somewhere, Somewhere around two and a half years, I think. And uh, we've got 10 chickens in the backyard. So I've had a fair amount of experience with birds. Little rat, so I says, what I did is I put brushless DC fans in the tank to keep the airflow high and keep anything from getting too stagnant for the morning geckos. Seems to keep mold away and everything smells great. Excellent. That's a good way to do it. Uh, that's probably really helpful for your morning geckos. Excellent solution. And uh, Nature Zone says, can you keep tailless whip scorpions with ice pods without the ice pods getting eaten? I keep dwarf isopods with mine and I've also put uh, Porcelio scabber isopods with my tailless whip scorpions without any problems. Um, I know that they will sometimes eat the larger isopods. They don't seem to bug the little ones, at least the adults don't. So dwarf isopods seem to work well. I've also used uh, the Costa Rican purple isopods. And Wolf Girl Play says, thanks, you're really helpful. Excellent, happy to help. Pocosaurus says, I have a group of goldfish in a backyard pond and they survive the winter. Yeah, they will unless they free, freeze all the way. Um, freeze all the way through, they're usually pretty good. So um, someday I want to do a goldfish pond. I don't know when that's going to be, but I would love to do it. The Pokosaur says the big one is black, so I named, named him Ancalagon. Excellent, you named him after the dragon. <laughs> I love it. Ancalagon the Black from the Lord of the Rings. Asylum JK says, I've had my dwarf white isopods for about two months, and I haven't seen the culture get much larger. Keep the closure fairly moist with one dry zone for self-climate control. Feed them squash, high-protein fish flakes, and eggshells. Doing something wrong. No, I don't think you are. Um, sometimes it takes a while to get kind of booming. You'll notice they're not doing much for a while, and then all of a sudden, boom, you see everything. Um, what is your temperature, though? You can get dwarf isopods, dwarf white isopods, to go crazy if you can keep them like in the high 70s to low 80s. They'll, they'll breed really fast. Um, I would also make sure you got plenty of leaf litter in there. If you have just like uh, the cocoa fiber, They'll do okay, but you put the leaf litter in there and they'll go like crazy. Brubby TV, hey, been a while, nice to see you. Mr. Snake says, my boop noodles are derping around. <laughs> it's funny how I'm learning the, the, the internet slang. I wouldn't, have understand the, I wouldn't have understood that a while ago, but my son has taught me some of that. And some of my other kids have taught me some of that too. So I, I know what you mean. I'm kind of amazed, but I do, which is pretty cool. Nature Zone said, I meant... Duck isopods at $25 each because they're both from the same place. Oh, okay. So that's the kind that you... Oh, you know what? I would not keep the duck isopods with them just because if you do lose one, that's $25 down the hatch. And so I wouldn't. Um, you could try putting something else similar to the rubber ducky isopods and see if they totally ignore them. Then it might be safer to do. But honestly, with that kind of uh, risk, I wouldn't do it. Um, Spug says, do you know how I get seed shrimps? I was thinking maybe I could get eggs online. If you know a place I could get some that would be nice. I know that uh, Arizona fairy shrimp has them, but I don't know which species they have, but they do have them. So check out ArizonaFairyShrimp.com and you can see what they've got. They do have seed shrimp. Wolf Girl Play says, what? Tell my fish about you. I, t I tell my fish about you and how you help, and the reaction looks happy. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Okay, and Asylum JK says, Temps is the only inconstant thing, so I'll definitely try getting that steady. Thanks. Cool. Just don't get them too hot and make sure they don't get dry. But if you can keep them a little warmer, it will speed them up. Just don't go over like low... Um, low... Eight, um, don't go over the low 80s. Maybe up to 85 would be the highest I'd go. Definitely don't go higher than that, but just around 80 or so, 78, 80, that would be ideal, and uh, they will breed for you. 
like crazy. And mine in the summer when my room, my critter room is like 78 degrees, they go crazy. So, okay. Um, I have only, I can only handle like the questions I've got now and then I'm going to have to leave. So let's see, everything created says, have you ever raised triops? If so, do you have any tips? I've had some before, but only one reached maturity. Yes, I have raised them many times successfully, and I actually want to make a video about it, but let me give you one tip um, right now. And that is that, the, this is like one of my big tips that I love to give out, is that make sure you raise, well, I'm going to give you two, okay? Start them in a small container. Don't get too big. Don't put too much sand or whatever, detritus, anything. Don't put a lot in. When you first start, it will overwhelm them and get too much bacterial growth. Um, so start out in a small container. Make sure you're using distilled or RO water. Don't use just plain spring water. It doesn't work very well in general. And what I would suggest is to get a microworm culture before you get the triops and feed them a little bit of microworms like after day one. That seems to really increase the survival rate for whatever reason. I think it's because they need to get the right kind of food in the right in a small amount of time. Um, and it's it's kind of hard to get the food density you need, but the microworms help with that. Chameleon I've never kept. Um, Nature Zone. I, I babysat one, but I've never kept one. Crystal Casadi said, poison dart frogs only poison in the wild, right? That is true. Either captive bred ones don't have toxins, and the uh, even wild caught ones don't have toxins after a while. Pokesaurus says, I have two Swedish ducks. I named them after the dinosaurs. Sigil Massasaurus and Oxalia. Cool. And your axolotl Benny has officially been announced as the king of the world. Well, that's cool. We have an axolotl, but we haven't had any announcements of royalty about it. Um, wolf Girl Play says, what's your favorite animal? Mine is a wolf. Also, how many fish do you have? Well, it is one of my favorite animals. If I had to pick one, it probably would be a wolf, honestly. I have a wolf necklace. It's pretty cool. I should wear it sometime in the live stream. And how many fish do I have? I don't know, because we have two goldfish, I have 11 um, multi-cichlids right now, one gold barb, and like, who knows how many endless live bears. Lots and lots of them. Mr. Snake has raised a panther chameleon from an egg. Awesome. Okay, so last question, then I got to go. Thanks for joining us everywhere. Nature Zone said, what was your first pet? It was a Shubunkian goldfish. It was probably actually a calico comet goldfish. But uh, his name was Peter, and I was four years old, and he was awesome. So thanks for joining. Hit that like button in the next 10 seconds if you can, if you would want to. And hope you all enjoy your weekend. And thank you all for joining us so much.